actually, in both of the cases, one of the biggest problems was the, the idea of um, minors taking pictures of themselves nude and then sending them out. So that even if you're doing that of your own body, you're still a minor, and then you're sending out pictures of that, and that's illegal. Right? That's not cool. To do. So I'm not going to touch too much on the legal aspect of it. What we wanted to touch more, obviously, in this setting is the spiritual aspect of it and what we respond to that with as Catholics. And I know at least in the second case of this, it involved over 100 students that were all kind of in this deal together. So obviously it's a pretty big deal. And what Alicia and I want to talk about a little bit is just try to come to some mental understanding of how we would respond to that. And also try to understand why a case or a situation like that starts in the first place. Um, so we're having to cut out a little bit of time because we've got to get out of here. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time asking reflection questions, but we just wanted to go over a few bullet points that we talked about that might help make some sense of this. And I think, um, I think when we talk about issues of purity and dignity and sex, I think there's two things we need to look at. We first of all have to consider what does this do to us as an individual when we treat these matters carelessly. The other issue is if you're involved in any kind of sexual activity, you're not the only person involved in it. So you also have to consider what happens to the other person or the other people. Um, and I think that's an important consideration. I don't think we think about it more. We're not only doing things to ourselves, to our own bodies, to our own dignity. We're also having a profound impact on the dignity of another or of others. And we can't forget this. So um, one of the big points we want to make make sure everybody was aware of, is when people come into your lives, any people, those people are placed there by God for some specific reason. We don't know necessarily what it is. But the point is, when you come in contact with any other human being, you have an opportunity to impact the rest of their life. Perhaps in a small way, perhaps in a large way. But also certainly perhaps in a good and holy and productive and fruitful way, or in a destructive and undignified. There's really not any middle ground. And I think we all need to pay close attention to the responsibility we have to other people and how we act toward them. Are we gonna lift them up and point them to holiness and to God? Or are we gonna destroy them, give them opportunities for temptation, bring them down, give Satan an opportunity to work on them through our careless behavior? And I think if we keep in mind the impact we have on other people through our actions, um, it adds a lot of gravity to the decisions we yeah, yeah, I can go ahead. Um, so, Jonathan and I were at Coffee Please yesterday and we were like talking about this because it's such an important issue. Um, and I'm a chastity educator, for those of you who don't know, so I travel around to um, you know, like 35 different grade schools and high schools and talk about chastity and the importance of understanding God's plan for sexuality and all these things. And when we were talking yesterday, they're just like, they're three things really that. Um, that I was thinking about in terms of sexting. And the first one was just like, the weight of our sin. And a lot of times, because sexting and pornography and things like that, that's become so normal in our culture, we don't start to realize like, how, how serious this really is and how much this hurts Christ. And especially during Lent, um, I think it's a good time to just like reflect on that, to realize that our sins, and especially against impurity are really are very serious because they hurt Christ. Like we're the, we are human beings. We're made in his image and likeness. And you know, we're the crown of his creation. And how much those sins must hurt Christ. Um, and two, we've lost just how, you know, we've lost so much. Um, we've lost what it means to be a human person. We've lost the dignity and the value that we have as human beings. And this, and this isn't just, you know, like a teenager problem where you get a lot more and things like that. When I talk to principals about sexting and pornography and things like that, they're always like, oh yeah, you know, like a lot of them could say like, well, kids these days, like we're just, we have so many problems. No, this is a cultural problem. We don't realize that we're made in God's image and likeness. We have dignity, we have value, and we're made to, um, to reflect the, the glory and the beauty of God. Like each one of us does that in a really unique way. And just like realizing that and thinking about that, how each and every single person, like how precious and valuable we are. Um, 
and loved by God. We were made to be loved, and we have that desire inside of us. But what Satan a lot of times does is that he takes that which is true, good, and beautiful, and just twists a little bit. You know, he twists our desire for love, our desire for communion, and our desire, all those things, and just gives it a little bit of a twist. Um, and we fight that, and we struggle with that. Um, and the last thing that I was thinking about was, I love John Paul II, okay, he's one of my favorite, um, just favorite people. And he said something, and I heard this a long time ago, but it's always really struck me, it's like a special, in a special way, and that he says, God assigns <coughs> the dignity of every woman as a task to every man. And simultaneously, he assigns as a duty the dignity of every man as a, as a um, duty for every woman. Okay? So what he's doing is he's entrusting us to each other. And I would just encourage you guys this week um, <coughs> to really think about that. Um, like, do what Jonathan was saying, like, think about who it hurts how we're hurt by that, how, um, how others are hurt by that. And also just to, um, I really challenge you guys, um, like for all of us, to, <coughs> to fight to uphold our, own, like our dignity. You know, in your schools, <coughs> in our youth group, in our families. <coughs> all of these things are so incredibly important. And I'm just challenging you all, this week, like, as we're talking about like sexting and as these issues just like keep coming up over and over again, Ask yourself, what is one thing I can do this week to protect each other's dignity? Okay? Um, so we're going to pray. Actually, Brad, did you have anything you wanted to add? How about you? Um, just watch your Facebook accounts, too. And your friends, right? That's an opportunity for evangelization, too. Not to call them out, like, publicly on their Facebook page, because... Mm -hmm then they'll just not be afraid anymore. Um, but if you see something there that's tearing someone else down, or like, girls, some, I'm constantly blown away by like, and we were emailing about this, like, mm -hmm. not only immodesty in dress, but our immodest speech and the ways that we speak publicly online. Like, we need to, to start guarding that and cleaning up our own Facebook pages if people write stuff on them. And hopefully it opens up to a conversation that you can have, a serious conversation, taking life seriously, right? Mm -hmm. Which is what that whole tragedy with Gemma and baby Gemma reminds me of, how serious I need to be taking my life, and all of you as well. So I tossed that out there, social, Facebook particularly, but the opportunities you can have on that to evangelize, or through it, to evangelize. Pretty much any social media, like, I mean, Twitter, I've, these problems with people all the time, and you guys know. But I think that's a great point, just like, being careful. And again, just like reminding ourselves that we are entrusted with each other's dignity. And that's a beautiful thing. It's challenging, but it's also amazing. And it's a privilege and an honor and a joy to be able to do that. And the good point about all this is Brad reminded us tonight that our faith and our church is not on the defensive. We have the words of eternal life. We have truth. We are on the offensive. We are the army against hate. So I would encourage you not just to refrain from being immodest. Take an active step toward purity and dignity. Find ways that you can lift people up, and I think it's going to help you in your own life and certainly going to help others as well. Okay. All right. We're almost out of time. Really quickly.